the Niners have these very strong opinions, and they change them all the time, but they make these very strong opinions off of very small sample sizes and act on them. And I guess the latest one is that Brock Purdy's great and Trey Lance isn't what they thought he was. Should we trust the Niners to make these decisions correctly at quarterback? I I actually trust Kyle Shanahan and the 49ers to do a lot. And the last two off seasons that we've entered, I said that I trusted the 49ers more than ever because they've kind of figured out how to navigate the off season, go get their one home run hitter, and then just kind of fill out the roster. And it's worked out really well for them. They also have multiple people that after year one and kind of being redshirted are, are going to contribute the next year and maybe at a really high near all pro level, like we saw with Hafunga. Mm-hmm. They know how to build a roster for the most part. They've done a really, really good job. They know how to develop coaches. They know how to get comp picks. There's a lot to trust them with. I'm buttering them up because no, I do not trust them at all with the quarterback position at all. And and this is the reason that I asked this question, Grant, is because this is what I've been hearing a lot, either on social media or through the chat on my show is like, well, you're just a YouTube guy. You don't know what you're looking at. These guys see these players every day in practice and they've spoken. Okay, maybe that's true. And and by the way, I'm not acting as if I know more than these guys. This is their career. But I'm not going to trust anybody who fell in love with Jimmy Garoppolo when I saw it three years ago that he wasn't any good. I'm not going to trust anybody that had a seventh round evaluation on Brock Purdy when I had a third round evaluation on him and then made him beat out Nate Sudfield to barely make the team made him the third string quarterback. They saw him every day in practice. Right. But they, they didn't, didn't choose they him over Jimmy. They didn't choose no. him over Trey. So no. they didn't have the foresight there. No. And these same people ranted and raved about Trey Lance when he was picked, ranted and raved about how well he was practicing against the scout team, how much they loved him. And now all of a sudden they don't love him. So so now they're geniuses when when they say Trey isn't good because it fits your narrative but they weren't geniuses when they were saying he's great. They were wrong then, but now they're right. No, I, I don't I don't trust them at all. This is the one area that I have zero trust with the 49ers. They're going into year seven. We don't know who the quarterback of the future is. They seem to be flying by the seat of their pants at every turn. They don't even know what they're saying. One guy says one thing. One guy says the other. Jed thinks that you need a great quarterback. They obviously don't believe that. That's not their philosophy. I have zero trust when it comes to the quarterback position. Absolutely zero. So if Sam Darnold starts week one, would not be surprised at all because that seems like a 49er move at this point. Absolutely. And that's why I feel like you can like Kyle Shanahan. as You can really, really respect him and John Lynch and feel like they've put together a first-class organization here out of nothing. But if, if they're clueless at quarterback, what are we doing? What are we doing here? I mean, you could be the best pretender in the league. You could be the most convincing fool's gold in the league, but you're still fool's gold because of the one position that you can't come close to figuring out. Um, And it's like, I think it's more important to figure out that one position than the rest of your roster. I think that's what it comes down to. It's more important to figure out that one position than the rest of your roster because is it great to have Fred Warner? Yes. You can also trade Fred Warner and draft other linebackers. He's just a linebacker. You know? Like you can also trade Debo Samuel and draft another wide receiver. Like there are great wide receivers every year. Great quarterbacks? Nah. They don't come around. Good enough ones do, but great ones don't. And s- somehow certain coaches are able to find them, develop them. Bill Walsh could, Andy Reid does. And those are the guys who win the championships. So if he can't be that guy, he'll always just be, you know, a contender, which makes him a pretender. He'll be in the mix, but not really. He'll be in playoff purgatory. And that exists. I mean, everyone knows about that in the, in the NBA. In the NFL, they act like, oh, you know, Jed said it yesterday. You got to be in the mix. And so, yeah, if you're in the mix, you could, nah, man, you're just in playoff purgatory because of the quarterback position. It's that simple. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, Jed York ha- seems to have the same philosophy as Shanahan that, hey, we just got to, as long as we keep getting there, eventually we're going to break through. We got the best team. We got the best team. We got the, it just, things mm-hmm. don't go our way every time. Things don't go our way. Well, you know, eventually things will go our way. No, man, you, you force things to go your way when you get a quarterback. 
Your your yeah. Super Bowl window truly opens when you have a quarterback. Yeah, I mean it's unlocked and, right now, but I don't think it's open. Grant, they don't have that guy yet. They don't have him yet. A, Kyle's a good coach, but and he's accomplished a lot. But he's so confident in himself. He's so arrogant that he's actually convinced himself that the quarterback position he's more important than the quarterback position. Like that's crazy. To not he's not. I'm not saying he's crazy. But like that's you've gone off the deep end, man. Like you got to rein it in. Andy Reid, first thing he said after winning the Super Bowl is, "Got to have a quarterback like Steve Young. You got to have a special quarterback." K- Kyle says, I-, "I just need a guy who's good enough on a rookie deal." Like, w- dude, you can't say that out loud, even if you believe it. You can't say that out loud. <laughs> now, if you have a a really good quarterback, we're talking top s- seven in the league who's on a rookie deal. You can hey! win with that. You can win with yeah, that. Of course. But he has to be top that. seven in the league. Yeah. One way or another. If if you have a good quarterback who can manage your offense and is good with all pros built around him and is maybe top 15, no, you can't win a Super Bowl. That's that's not that's not enough to win a Super Bowl. Not today, it's not. So no, I just think their philosophy is way off. Way off. Yeah. Tyler says I don't trust them to be honest with the quarterback <laughs> position. Why I mean, I think you? it's just, it's the quarterback position is extremely hard to scout and develop, yep. and I think it's fair to say that the Niners aren't good at it. It's not like they want to be; they're trying. It's really hard, and I think Jed, you know, if he ever hires someone else, he might want to prioritize this whole conversation in in the interview process. And when I was saying this offseason, like fired Kyle or trade him and hire Shane Steichen. I mean, I don't know if I if that's the answer. But the reason I was thinking that is the quarterback position. At least with Shane Steichen, you could interview him and be like, what was going on with Justin Herbert and Jalen Hurts? What did you do? Maybe he wasn't the guy. But it looked like Brian Dayball knows what he's doing with the quarterback position. It seems like he got the most out of Josh Allen and then went to New York and resurrected Daniel Jones' career. That's a coach who's worth some money, Brian Dayball. That's a real skill set, right? I don't give a damn about your scheme. Scheme changes year to year. That scheme is fickle. I want to know about the quarterback position. You'll figure it out from there. So Dayball looks like the truth. That's why he won coach of the year. That's why he won coach of the year. Kyle tried to sneak in with the Brock Purdy thing, but. Unfortunately for Dayball, I think his owner was all in on keeping Daniel Jones. And I think Dayball would have been willing to move on from him. Dude, but he, he, now he's got Daniel guy. Jones forced, forced on him. Now what is he going to do? He's screwed. That's a good point. That's a good point. Daniel Absolutely Ailman true. says vets didn't like Lance over JG, they, uh, they're they tough, loving Lance. Hype Darnold, clear that Lance is week one starter. If Lance fails, Purdy's proven reliable. Win-win. I guess. I mean... Dude, if Lance starts week one and loses <laughs> and the whole team likes Sam Darnold, they're going to go with Sam Darnold week two. Yeah, like, then week this two, isn't, exactly. This isn't tough love. Like, this is this is not good, this whole Sam Darnold thing. This is a real Yeah, I don't think it's 40 here. chess. I don't think they're... Uh, I, I don't listen picture, to how they're talking about Darnold. Yeah, I don't picture Kyle like just strategically planning this out. Like, you know what? If if nah. I sell everybody on Darnold, then Trey's gonna elevate his game. Then we'll get the real Trey. And then you know what? I actually wanted Trey to start the whole time. Right. This was the best way to motivate him. No, right. I don't think he's thinking as that. if as if Kyle's thinking that far down the line. Like, no, Kyle yeah. is impulsive. He's impulsive. He, he's the one who traded up in the first place to the number three pick. Like, that was an impulsive move. Yeah. Chad says, he's remember a, when everybody... Impulsive, he's impulsive question to question. Oh. He, oh, Question to question, he changes his answer. Absolutely. Chad says, remember when everybody in the quarterback room was better than Alex Smith? Remember Sean Hill, LOL, JTO, Trey Lance is the new Alex Smith. Mm. Mm. I can see that. A lot in common. Kinda. Kyle's quarterback's Bethard Mullins interceptolo Kirk. <laughs> Kirk, they do have something in common. Bobby D says, haven't seen this in years. The offense is different. It's special with Brock on the field. Grant Cohn, if BP comes back 100% what changed, Grant, haven't seen this in years. The offense is different. It's special with Brock on the field. Did I really say that? What I will say, it was special down the stretch, but it wasn't special against Dallas. It wasn't special against Philly. It was special against some bad teams, and it was special in a lot of games with Jimmy Garoppolo too. Not all of them. So it's fair to wonder, you know, was it, I think what, I think what we saw happen was Brock elevated the offense from what Jimmy had it at, but he wasn't carrying the offense. 
McCaffrey was. Jim, Jimmy McCaffrey carried the offense once he got here. Well, and yeah, once Purdy McCaffrey elevated it. Yeah. Purdy elevated it. But that was a good offense when McCaffrey got here. It was a terrible offense before McCaffrey got here. McCaffrey got here, they started scoring points with Jimmy. And then Purdy comes in, they keep scoring points and score even more. He elevated it, but he didn't carry it. Jimmy played his most efficient football of his career as soon as CMC was here. That's right. And it, it's the same. It's this. This is literally, at least for me, I, I mean, I, everybody stands in a different spot. I'm not going to speak for you, but for me, this is a similar conversation that we had with Jimmy Garoppolo. Jimmy Garoppolo is better than all the other options that they've had. But Jimmy Garoppolo, also not very good. Brock Purdy, better than Jimmy Garoppolo, so better than the other options that they've had. I don't know if he's very good. I mean, when you're surrounded by... Tell me one team that for sure has more weapons than the 49ers on offense. So when you're surrounded by the most talent in the league from an offensive weapon perspective, and that's what you inherited... I got to see more than nine games and I got to see it when CMC gets injured or Kittle's out for a few games or Debo pulls his hamstring again. Like that's what I got to see. Also, Bobby D you don't know that Brock Purdy is going to come back a hundred percent. And also like 19 points against Dallas, like Dallas was a good defense. Yeah. But like 19 points, I, I, I don't know that he's like necessarily a franchise quarterback. I know that he's better than Jimmy. But the offense was working at a really high level with Jimmy, too. Yeah, they sucked against the Saints, but they scored 19 against Dallas. Dallas has a better defense than New Orleans, and Brock is better than Jimmy. There's no question. Brock elevated the offense from what Jimmy had it at. But still, saying he's better than Jimmy doesn't mean that he is uh, a Pro Bowl quarterback. I mean, the Lions wouldn't trade Jared Goff. better than Jimmy. Kirk Cousins well, well, is better than Jimmy. If you put Kirk Cousins on this offense, he would have elevated it over Jimmy. Do you want Kirk Cousins to be your franchise quarterback? That's the that's basically what you're asking me right now. So no, no. If you I, called up I the don't. Lions and said we'll trade you Brock Purdy for Jared Goff straight up, what would the Lions say? No. If you called up the no. Seah- Seahawks and said we'll trade you Brock Purdy for Geno Smith straight up, what would the Seahawks say? They would say no. No. Just saying. I'm just saying. I don't think the Giants would trade Daniel Jones straight up for him either. Dude, he had a he had two good months and then he mangled his arm. Yeah. All Niners says we keep saying Trey needs to be given a chance to show us what he's got. What do you guys think specifically he needs to show? It's so tough, man. Like I, I don't I don't know what Kyle's fully looking for i don't know if i mean other I than wins other than wins and listening to what kyle says i mean that's that's good enough for kyle i feel like so i don't know it's tough i to feel say. like they've written if, him off if yeah if i'm evaluating trey lance and what would i like to see him improve on yeah i would like to see him improve on trusting his eyes yeah a lot of people confuse trey lance and say oh, well he can't read a defense i mean it's obvious look at him he no, that's not true. He goes through his progressions just fine. He's a really smart kid. But when you haven't played and the league speed may be a little bit quicker than anticipated and you haven't had time to develop, you may see it and you want to pull the trigger. But I just talked about the difference between him and Sam Darnold is he doesn't make a lot of boneheaded mistakes. He's going to err on the side of caution. He actually plays very safe as a quarterback. So instead of taking that risk, if he thinks there's any chance it's a bad decision, He just won't make the throw. So I would prefer that he took these chances, figured out what throws he can get away with, what is open in the NFL, what's not. But that's going to take time. And he doesn't have time, unfortunately. So I don't see it happening in a 49er uniform unless he's able to start for a full season. Vicky says Darnold will be the starter until Purdy is ready. Kyle calls the shots. His goal is to get all three quarterbacks injured with his subpar offensive line. (laughs) <laughs> harsh michael says lance's best game against the texas second half that's uh where you hang your hat brock's run against his opponents you say they were against bad teams hypocrite uh, who said where did that happen what like, am i a hypocrite about 
Did I say no. that Trey Lance is better than Brock Purdy? Did I say that? I didn't say that. That's tripping, man. Niner fans I are think, just doing all this quarterback fighting. I, know, I think... Uh, we're all saying that Brock... We're talking about potential and futures, and we're saying that Trey Lance has shown enough to not give up on him. Yeah, that's it. I don't know what you thought I said, Michael. <laughs> I'm That's not it. saying and that Brock Purdy isn't going to be good or that he's fool's gold. He could be good too. But the fact is that one guy has eight starts. One guy has four starts. Both guys are coming off serious injuries. The Niners are acting like they know which one's going to be the truth. It's like you don't know anything about either one of them. Why don't you just stop saying stuff and say we have a very limited sample size. We're going to take it one day at a time. I know it's boring and maybe it's not what your fans want to hear, but it's the truth. That's the truth. You don't know that much about Trey. You don't know that much about Brock. Right. Brock's shown a lot of promise. Trey hasn't shown as much, but he hasn't had as many much playing time, and he was a known project anyway. Brock was a known low low uh, ceiling, high floor prospect anyway. Like none of this is surprising. It's all very early. It's the Niners' fault that they couldn't get more starts for either one of these guys. Um, let's let let it play out. That's what I would say. You you know you know what I what I like. Um, I was talking to Vish the other day and he had a really, really good take. And I think mm. he said it on his show now, so I'm not going to give it away before I would have kept it to myself because I want it to be his take. But he had a really good take. He said, if the 49ers had drafted Mac Jones, 49er fans would think that he is the next big deal right now. It's true. Because it's Mac true. Jones was, his floor was higher mm -hmm. and he would have performed very well to this point with all the weaponry around him. And instead of looking across America and saying that dude's a bus, get him out of here. He's terrible. He would have played really well. He would have showed out and every 49er fan or most 49er fans would think that he is like the next Joe Burrow. When in reality, we know that's not the case because we've seen him not with these weapons and not on this team. But we, we would have thought that if he had been drafted by the 49ers and his point was, I don't believe in Mac Jones, and I wouldn't have believed in Mac Jones, but a lot of people would have based off of that, and I agree with him wholeheartedly. Dreams24, thank you for 99 cents. Fish and chips, two pounds, says Schemer Kyle going all out, running 23, handoff city. <laughs> handoff city. That's what they call Santa Clara now. <laughs>